No lights or uh, or No, lights over here. Oh, man. 
It's the matchup that no one thought was going to happen, but it's happening anyway. It's the Sioux Falls Sunfish and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks from Grand Forks. Hello, Sunfish fans and Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fans. It's David Coyer, the voice of the Sioux Falls Sunfish, bringing you all of tonight's action on the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. The Sunfish just finished up a two-game series from the state capital of South Dakota, Pier, against the Trappers, winning... Well, they split it. It was one and one. If you go back to Friday's game in Sioux Falls, the Sunfish took the series two out of three games. Well, the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks just finished up eight straight road games where they went five and three, winning their last two against the Casper Horseheads. Fun story about last night's game in Casper. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks partway through the game had to pause the game so that the 4th of July festivities could go down in Casper. That's right, fireworks. We're uh, going off about halfway through the game, and the game had to get paused before the Whiskey Jacks would take game three against the Horseheads. But for the ninth time this season, it's the Whiskey Jacks against the Sunfish, and here's the Sunfish lineup tonight. Leading off playing second, it'll be JT Mix, followed by Declan Beers. He'll be out in left field tonight. Jesus Licone batting third out at first base, and it's Will Olson, the power hitter for the Sunfish. He'll be catching tonight. Followed by Norris McClure over at third with Gannon Thompson following him out in right field. The 7-8-9 goes Kenneth Dutka, Dane Frazier, and Benito Garcia. Once more, Mix, Beers, Lee Cohn, Olsen, McClure, Thompson, Dutka, Frazier, Garcia for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. On the mound, Jack Moffitt in his sixth start for the Wheat, Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. He's 0-3 on the season with a 9.44 ERA through 20 innings pitched. Has 29 walks and 22 strikeouts in those 20 innings. It's an overcast day from Craft Field in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Wind blowing out just to left center field, mostly directly out, but the wind's changing direction. Moffitt gets set, mixes at the plate. Moffitt will kick and deal for the first pitch. A fastball that just misses away. 7.03, two minutes early here from Grand Forks, and we're underway in this ninth meeting between Wheat City and Sioux Falls. 82 degrees and partly cloudy at first pitch. The sun shining just to our right. Clouds over Craft Field. JT Mix pops this one up to second. It'll be Garrett Olson drifting back in the shallow right center field to make the catch for out number one. JT Mix likes to attack quickly at the plate, swinging at the second pitch. It'll be Declan Beers batting second, the lefty, out of Northern Iowa Area Community College. Declan on the season. Batting 304 for Sioux Falls. On Saturday, he went 0 for 5 with a walk. Fastball misses away, and it's 1 and 0. These two teams lasted battle in the Sunfish home game that was played in Carroll, Iowa a few weekends ago. The 1 0 misses low and in. It's 2 0 on the breaking ball. In that series, Declan played two games, going two for six with four walks. There was a doubleheader on that Sunday after the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks took game one on Saturday. Beers fouls one off out of play to the left side. Two balls, one strike now to the Sunfish left fielder. Sioux Falls started off the second half of the season 3-0 and before dropping Last night's game to the Pier Trappers. A breaking ball misses away and Piers is ahead. Three balls, one strike. The Sunfish would 
get on the board in the fifth inning off of a two-run shot by Will Olson. That would tie the game, and the Trappers just would keep putting up one run after that until late they put up two in an inning, and the Sunfish just couldn't battle back. A curveball bounces in, and Declan Beers draws the one-out walk. That's Moffitt's 30th walk of the season as Jesus Lee Cone steps up. Draws something in the plate, taps the shin guards of both the catcher and the home plate umpire, per usual in his first plate appearance of the night. And he steps up for his first chances against Jack Moffitt. The junior out of York College has had a hot bat lately, batting 342 as he takes a breaking ball low and away. Went three for five last night, all singles, with a strikeout. And against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, however, he has a bit less of success, batting 248. He takes a fastball out of play down the right field line. The Sunfish bat 284 against the Whiskey Jacks through eight games. Kenneth Dutka has made an appearance in all eight games. He's making his ninth appearance against Weed City tonight. Fastball right at the chest. It's one ball, two strikes to Lee Cohn. The Sunfish wearing their gray-white grays, gray hats with the orange sunfish and an orange brim, the white uniforms, which the orange and teal sunfish, and the alternating sleeves as well, and the gray pants with black trim down the sides. There goes Beers, the curveball misses away, the throw down, it's a bit high, but they got him. The throw was a bit high from Rhett Stein, but a nice tag applied. And Declan Beers is caught stealing, and it's two balls and two strikes to Jesus Lee Cohn with two outs in the top of the first inning. Nolan Drill, Trey Guajardo, and Owen Viano from left to right in the outfield. Jackson Sorensen and Dean Bittner on the left side of the infield. The pitch from Moffitt. Fouled to the backstop, it's still a 2-2 count. Garrett Olson, Jake Jelly on the right side of the infield with Rhett Stein calling the signs behind the plate for Moffitt. A familiar field for the Sioux Falls Sunfish is Kraft Field. They played five games against the Whiskey Jacks to kick off the season. Two of their first three series were against the Whiskey Jacks here in Grand Forks. A curveball doesn't get Lee Cohn to bite. He battles back to a full count. Technically, the Whiskey Jacks have never played the Sunfish on their own home turf. Again, that home series, quote unquote, for the Sunfish was in Carroll, Iowa. Here's the payoff from Moffitt. A breaking ball outside and Lee Cohn does not chase. He draws himself a two out walk. And that'll bring up Will Olson, who might take advantage of this wind that's blowing out to left center. Most of his, actually all of his home runs have been hit over the left field wall this season. He leads the team in the long ball. And actually, this is Olson's first time playing against the Whiskey Jacks. A fastball low makes it a 1-0 count. Olsen was one of the players to join a bit later for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Augustana made that late playoff run in the Division II playoffs. Olsen pops one up. That'll go over the press box into the grandstand for strike one. And while it was JT Mix and Mitch Stroh who joined the Sunfish for that second series here in Grand Forks, Olsen took a little bit more time off. He caught most of the games for the Augustana Vikings this season. And then in Carroll, Iowa, Olsen was at a wedding. He was actually a groomsman in that wedding, so he has not played the Whiskey Jacks as a fastball rides up and in. Two balls, one strike now to Olsen. He's batting 412, leads the Sunfish in batting average in this inaugural 2021 season. Yesterday went one for five. His only hit in that two-run home run to tie up the game in the fifth inning. Here's the 2-1. Breaking ball low. It's three balls and one strike. Moffitt has only forced one out in play. Otherwise, it was Declan Beers who was caught running. 
via Rhett Stein on the throw out down to second. The Whiskey Jacks wearing light blue uniforms with dark blue sleeves. Lee Cohn acting as he's going off the pickoff attempt at first. Lee Cohn's called safe. Moffitt had not pitched yet, and Jesus likes to dance around over at first base all season long, trying to get the attention of pitchers and make them force a mistake. He was caught pretty far off first that time. Took him a bit to come back. Just a late, late tag by Jake Jelly. Here's the 3-1. Popped up high. Center field drifting back is Guajardo. He's at the warning track, but he's underneath it for out number three. A deep fly ball to Will Olson in a pitcher-friendly park. That is Kraft Field. The Sunfish are held scoreless off no hits with one left on base in the top of the first inning. The Whiskey Jacks will get their first shot at the Sunfish.
And going back to that last time that Angelo pitched against the Whiskey Jacks back on June 2nd. an even 300. Deep. Norris McClure at third with Benito Garcia back at short. JT Mix starting at second base once again. Jesus Licone over at first with Will Olson behind the plate. A breaking ball in the dirt. McDowell's caught off second to throw down to JT Mix. He fires it over to McClure. That gets by to the fence. No backup. It goes actually out of play as McClure raises his hands. Caleb McDowell will take home. And Trey Guajardo is being awarded third base as the ball went out of play on the throw from JT Mix. Guajardo actually had his hands up wondering... Why does he get that? And it's Walker Bullington coming out as well to argue with the home plate umpire. Bullington gives the thumbs up to the field umpire who kind of just gestured that Guajardo got third and Bullington, he's not one to really have long drawn out conversations with umpires. It's one nothing Whiskey Jacks on the throw from JT Mix over to Norris McClure. A ground ball left side past the diving glove of Benito Garcia in the left. Another base hit, this time off of the bat of Viano. It's now 2 nothing Whiskey Jacks in the bottom of the first inning. It always seems like the Sunfish seem to struggle against the Whiskey Jacks when the two teams face off. These two teams do not like each other either. The last time in Carroll, Iowa, there was some bad blood, some heated conversation, including in game two of the doubleheader, which was game three of the series. Jesus Licone, well, almost got in a fight with some Whiskey Jacks players. Breaking ball runs low and in. It's one ball, no strike to Sorensen. Runner at first, one out here in the bottom of the first inning. The Whiskey Jacks have taken an early 2-0 lead. A slider is swung on low. It's an even 1-1 count. Sorensen played in all three games against the Sunfish in that Carroll, Iowa series, only getting one hit in nine at-bats, walked three times. The lefty looks at a fastball called a ball outside. It's two balls and one strike. And while both teams kind of have the sigh of relief that Carroll, Iowa was it for the season as they really started to get at each other's throats. Ball in the dirt, swung on and missed. It's 2-2 now as Sorensen looks to the sky thinking, why did I just swing at that one? It bounced right on home plate. Andalo sets and delivers. Sorensen looks at another pitch outside. It's a full count. And there's the rule in the Expedition League. 35 pitches in one inning, you're out. Well, that pitch marked pit just above 20 pitches in this inning as there's one fouled off. It's still a full count.
That was pitch 23. Pitch 6 in the at-bat. Here comes number 7. This one is lined into left or center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Dutka was sh shielding his eyes from... I don't know if it's from the sun. There's not much sun shining here on Kraft Field. But he had to put his glove up. And there's another base hit. Viano will move to second. Sorensen's now on first. And with one out, it's Nolan Drill. There's no one moving in the Sunfish bullpen yet. It looks like Walker Bullington, Tyler Olmstead, and potentially Lane Hovde have all left the dugout. And there's a bunch of players looking as well. And I'm not sure if someone just maybe collapsed or taken someone somewhere. Hopefully everything's okay now that the coaching staff is in the dugout. Ground ball to Mix. It, he can't come up with it. He fires it over to first and throws it away. One run's going to score. Viano, or excuse me, Sorensen's now at third as Lecone has to run over to the fence. So JT Mix bobbled it, couldn't come up with it cleanly, and as he throws it over to first, he threw it low and away, and Lecone couldn't come up with it. Everyone is safe. Drill heads all the way over to second. Viano's going to score. It's 3 nothing Whiskey Jacks with two runners in scoring position now and first base all empty. There was already an error in the game by JT Mix throwing it over to Norris McLernick getting by and now the second baseman has his second error of the game. And E4 gets Nolan Drill over to second, and a run scores, and the Sunfish are having their struggles against the Whiskey Jacks once more. It's Rhett Stein now. Takes a breaking ball in for ball one. Stein on Friday in Casper went one for two with a double. The 1-0, a fastball at the knees for strike one. He only played one game against the Sunfish in Carroll, and that was game one of the doubleheader on the 20th. He went one for three with an RBI. That was the only game that series that the Sunfish won, and it was a 13-4 routing. This time a changeup called a strike at the knees. It's one ball and two strikes. Lane Hovde and Tyler Olmstead are back in the dugout. I don't see Walker Bullington. He's just walked through the dugout door. Hopefully everything's okay. The 1 2, low and away, doesn't get Stein to chase. It's a 2 2 count. So two errors, two costly errors for the Sunfish have made it a 3 0 ball game. This time a breaking ball runs low and in and it's a full count once more. Andalo has only gotten one out. It was via the strikeout to Jake Jelly and since then he's gotten some hitters close but they just keep putting into play. A foul ball on a fastball that would have been in at the knees. Rolls a bit back to the backstop and it's still a full count again. The Whiskey Jacks being able to battle off in a, a couple of these pitches in these at-bats, running up Delo's pitch count, will put the Sunfish in a tough predicament. They don't have many arms on this road trip, and they still have two more games. A breaking ball is fouled once more. It's still a 3-2 count. Seven pitches in this at-bat. Santangelo's up to 31. He's got to get out soon or he might have to get pulled from the game. Fastball high is fouled up. Third base line. McClure drifting over at the fence. He makes the catch in foul territory for out number two. Right at the fence, just past the Sunfish dugout. And it'll be Dean Bittner, the eight hitter. Up with two outs, runners on second and third. The Whiskey Jacks already hold a 3-0 lead. 
and it's in games where the Sunfish trail early that they struggle a bit to start coming back. They were down 2 nothing after the first three innings yesterday, and, well, just when they would start coming back and tying it up as a fastball misses out the ankles to Dean Bittner, just when they would start coming back to tie it up, the Trappers would just then keep taking leads right back, and it's just got too much for the Sunfish who couldn't come back all too much. This time, a fastball hits the inside corner. It's 1-1. Bittner, through 25 games on the season, a 287 batting average. Yesterday, going one for two, scoring three runs and having three walks against the Horseheads. Pitch inside is fouled straight into the bare hands of head coach Robbie Laughlin. It's one ball and two strikes to Dean Bittner. Three runs off two hits and two errors for the Whiskey Jacks this inning. A breaking ball is bounces in the dirt is blocked by Will Olson. The Sunfish have now made 16 errors this season just against the Whiskey Jacks alone. The 2-2. Grounded high into the glove of McClure. He fires it over to first, and the inning is over. Three runs score off one hit, two errors, with two left on base for the Whiskey Jacks. After one full from Kraft Field, it's the Whiskey Jacks three, the Sunfish zero. Back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. It's the Whiskey Jacks 3, the Sunfish 0. Has two costly mistakes in the field for Sioux Falls. Allowed two runs to cross. It's Norris McClure, Gannon Thompson, Kenneth Dutka leading it off. McClure swings at a first pitch from Jack Moffat. It's no balls, one strike. And McClure batting 316 through 14 games. His first experience against the Whiskey Jacks came in Carroll, Iowa, as he skyrockets one to third base. Sorensen coming in and making the catch for out number one. The bats cooled off significantly yesterday in Pier for Sioux Falls. They did have 10 hits, which was actually their first time in their since their game against Spearfish on Thursday in which they had double digit hits, but they were 3-0. Yesterday losing by two to the Trappers. They just couldn't get the hits going until late as Gannon Thompson takes a fastball right at the belt for strike one. Thompson was absent from Pier this weekend for personal reasons. He's batting 288. he's gotten his bat a little warm in more recent games. Takes a breaking ball low and away. It's a 1-1 count. In fact, in the last 
five games. Well, he's only played in one of them, but he's batting 500. Fastball up and in makes it a 2-1 count. But in the last 10 games, he's played in five of them, and he's 8 for 16 with seven RBIs and a home run. That home run coming last Monday against the Fremont Moo. He absolutely crushed it over the center field wall. He takes this one high to right field. It looked like it was carrying a bit further, but instead it's right at Owen Viano for out number two. For those of you Sunfish fans, and well, you Whiskey Jacks fans definitely know this, but the Sunfish fans might remember that here in Grand Forks, the press box is underneath the grandstand, so I'm at field level, so it's a little, a little harder for me to see how far the ball's actually traveling. It's Kenneth Dutka now. He takes a breaking ball that bounces inside. It's one ball, no strikes. And Dutka has proven in the last week that He's just as good at the plate as he is in the mound, on the mound. He pops this one up though. Shallow center field, charging in is Guajardo. Guajardo will call everybody off and make the catch. It's a three up, three down inning. Three fly outs for the Sunfish. Keep them scoreless. It's three nothing Whiskey Jacks from Grand Forks. Andalo Santangelo's day is done after just one inning. He allowed three runs off three hits. All the runs were earned. They were credited as earned with one walk and one strikeout. Two errors, though, led to those three runs. And it'll be Dean Bittner and Garrett Olson, the 8-9 hitters, due up, followed by Caleb McDowell. But the first pitch from Tom Sun, the newest Sunfish. Sunfish were running out of arms, and, well, Tom Sun was local. He played at Augustana, forces a ground ball into the diving glove of JT Mix, fires over to first, a stretching Lee Cohn, can't hold on to the ball, and it'll be an infield hit for Dean Bittner. Either way, I'm not even sure if the throw would have been in time. It was a nice stretch by Lee Cohn, just couldn't hold on to it. A good diving stop by JT Mix deep in the hole at second base. But Tom Sun... 
played at Augustana. Well, he didn't get any playing time in 2021. He was just a freshman out of Beijing, China. Or correction, that was Garrett Olson to lead off the inning. We're back to Caleb McDowell at the top of the order. That's what happens when I mess up on my scorebook. A fastball at the knees makes it a 1-1 count. I'm just going to go double check how we ended that first inning. Yeah, we ended with Dean Bittner, who grounded out. This is a grounder up the middle. Benito Garcia will tap second, fire over to first in time for a double play. Another double play turned by the Sioux Falls Sunfish. And so Caleb McDowell grounds into a 6-3 double play. Garrett Olson is sent packing as well, and there's two outs in the bottom of the second inning. That brings up the lefty Guajardo. Tom's son, a righty. He's been suiting up the past couple games as a fly ball down the third base line into the glove and foul territory to Norris McClure will be out number three. So in his first inning as a Sunfish, Tom Sun does an unofficial three up, three down inning, allowing one hit, no errors, no one left on base. It's three nothing Whiskey Jacks. Dane Frazier, Benito Garcia, and the top of the order, JT Mix, due up in the top of the third inning. The Sunfish went three up, three down in the second and remained scoreless and hitless here in the third inning from Grand Forks. Dane Frazier takes a bouncing ball off the plate for ball one. He's batting 255 on the season through 16 games played. He's currently on a three-game hitting streak. On Friday and Saturday, had some good games against Pierre. Takes another curveball off the plate. It's two balls, no strikes. Two for three in the 10-2 victory from Karis Park on Friday. Two for six in Saturday's 11-2 victory. Here's the 2-0. Fastball just on the corner of the plate. It's two balls, one strike. Still overcast. It looks like the sun has peaked behind, or it's gone behind some clouds. The lights are on at Craft Field. They've been on since the first inning. Fastball high, no chase by Frazier. He's ahead 3 1. The Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks each had a bit of a travel today. The Sunfish woke up in pier left at 8 a.m. and had about a six and a half hour bus ride from the state capital of South Dakota here to Grand Forks, North Dakota. Fastball in, gives Dane Frazier the leadoff walk. That's the first time this game that the Sunfish have gotten a leadoff man on as Frazier hands off his elbow guard like a football to first base coach Tyler Olmstead who promptly puts it on his own elbow. It's now Benito Garcia at the plate, the number nine hitter from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Batting 221, back at his spot of shortstop. A curveball misses high, throw down to first. The tag not in time, as Dane Frazier was caught a bit off as Benito Garcia was showing an early bunt. 
Went one for four on Saturday with an RBI and a walk. His RBI coming off of a sack fly. Had the night off yesterday with Jonathan Brandon playing at short as a curveball breaks in for strike one as Garcia's caught looking. But so the Sunfish had that travel while the Whiskey Jacks were traveling back from Casper. They left right after the game yesterday. Didn't get back until 1 p.m. this afternoon. About a 12-hour bus ride as a fastball hits the lower part of the corner, or lower outside corner, excuse me. It's one ball, two strikes to Garcia. So both teams probably a little groggy from their bus rides. The Whiskey Jacks having a few more hours to rest up a bit and stretch out. The 1-2 bounces in front of the left-handed batter's box. It's a 2-2 count. The Sunfish got here about an hour before they were supposed to report to the field. We got to the hotel here in Grand Forks. Got to rest up a bit. Nothing too much. They did have BP before the game, their usual warm-up routine to get a little bit loose. Still no fun after riding a bus ride, not even for the broadcaster. I'm a big guy, and bus rides are tough. Garcia swings in front of a breaking ball and pulls it straight into the Sunfish dugout. It pounces off the chain link guarding it and rolls up the left field line. Two balls and two strikes still to Garcia. The wind has died down. The flag out in dead center field is motionless. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Curveball driven into left field. Coming over is drill. He's going to make the catch on the run for out number one. A nice hit ball by Garcia. That's the problem with the Sunfish as of late. They'll have these hard hit balls and hit them directly to someone. When they do get the ones to land, it's, well, it works wonders. The Sunfish, even in their wins, have been stranding a decent amount of runners on base. Dating back to Thursday's 10 to five win against Spearfish, they left 11 as JT Mix chases a fastball high and misses. It's no balls, one strike. And in Saturday's 11 to two victory, they only had nine hits, but it was the 13 walks that left 17 left stranded for Sioux Falls. Tonight, they're just struggling to get people on as Mix fouls another one out of play down the right field line. It's no balls, two strikes. Mix, the number one hitter in the order, flew out to second his first time up, only saw two pitches that at bat. He's so far just seen two this at bat. Frazier brushing away some bugs over at first base in front of his face. Takes a little bit of a hop. Doesn't go. Mix grounds one to the hole at short. Bittner to Olsen. The relay over to first. Not in time as Mix runs that out. Jelly had a bit of a stretch, but it wasn't enough to get Mix. So just the 6-4 fielder's choice for out number two. Declan Beers, who walked and was caught stealing his first time up. Steps up with a runner on first, two outs. Still no hits for Sioux Falls through two and two thirds. Beers using his teal bat that he's been sporting for most of the season. Fastball right at the knees is looked at for a strike by Declan. There's a, I think it's a grasshopper, if I'm not mistaken, just in front of us here on the window. He's actually just gave me a little bit of a wave. Kind of creepy. I'm not a big fan of bugs, and he's just kind of been sitting on the window right in front of my eyes. Not a huge fan as Beers fouls one off the mask of the home plate umpire. Lands right in front of me, in front of the press box. Whiskey Jacks player going to come and scoop it up and toss it back to the dugout. And snowballs and two strikes to Beers. Three nothing ball game in favor of Wheat City. JT Mix at first, off of the fielder's choice. The wind starting to pick up, blowing out to left field. Here's the 0-2. Beers lets a fastball away go. It's one ball, two strikes. He brushes by some bugs, as well. 
must be some gnats or something out there as Dane Frazier was over at first, brushing him away in between pitches, and after that one, Beers had to swipe away at something. Moffitt sets. Here's the one, two. A curveball drops in. Beers gets caught looking. Strikeout number one for Moffitt on the day. Out number three in the third inning. No runs off no hits. No errors. One left on base. It's still 3 nothing Whiskey Jacks as we head to the bottom of the third. It'll be Jake Jelly leading things off for the Whiskey Jacks in the bottom of the third inning. They still hold a 3-0 lead over Sioux Falls off four hits. Sunfish committing two errors. Tom Sun back on the mound. He pats his chest as he that breaking ball just misses up and in. This is another cool thing. The Sunfish have already had another Augustana pitcher on the team. Caleb Kranz is a fastball gets away from Olsen. Low and away, it's two balls, no strikes. Jelly struck out his first time up. And it was Caleb Kranz, the Augustana Viking pitcher, who had to end his season early. Fastball misses high. It's three balls and no strikes to Jelly. And since he left, the three Augustana teammates, Will Olsen, JT Mix, and Mitch Stroh, we're the ones who suggested to general manager Nick Moen and Walker Bullington as another fastball runs low and away and Jelly draws the four-pitch walk to lead off the third inning. But they suggested Tom Sun. Sun actually lives with Mitch Stroh and Mitch Stroh kind of drives him around, drives him to ball games. Stroh's over in the dugout. He wasn't in pier as well and I think he got to make the trip up here. So Sun issues his first walk. This time a fastball is just going to miss high. It's Owen Viano who singled and scored on the error that was thrown over to first base. Will Olson called time before giving the sign again. A pickoff at first. No tag by Lee Cohn. It's a good thing the Sunfish don't wear their 50 shades of gray uniform combination anymore because Tom Sun's gray glove would be another different shade than the other ones as the fastball's right down the middle for a strike. Instead, Sioux Falls going with the gray, right, gray white grays tonight. They're 2 0 wearing this combination. Fastball is taken high to center field, going back is Dutka. He's near the wall. He makes the catch at the warning track. Jelly was standing on second base on that deep fly ball, but Dutka able to make the catch for out number one. Jelly makes it safely back to first as the throw was, well, a little delayed coming in as it was coming so deep. It's 4-10 
Out to direct center field. Dutko was just to the left of that sign. 330 to the corners here, 375 to the alleyways. It's Jackson Sorensen, who himself had a single the first inning. Takes a fastball high. The Whiskey Jags coming into today's game. 251 through eight games as a team against the Sunfish. This time a fastball is taken high and deep to right field. Thompson lets it bounce off the wall. The throw in cut off by JT Mix. Jelly's being sent home. The throw in bounces to Will Olson. He got the tag. A nice relay by JT Mix for the 9 4 2 put out on the hard hit ball that bounced at the lower part of the wall right between, right underneath the 375 in right center field. Sun left a fastball over the plate that Sorensen just pulled straight to the wall. And again, it hit the base of the wall on the fly, so you can just imagine how hard that one was hit. But a nice throw by Gannon Thompson and another great throw by JT Mix gets Jake Jelly. So it'll be a single with Sorensen ending up on second base. And now there's two outs for Nolan Drill. Breaking ball just misses high and outside. It's one ball, no strikes. Sorensen getting a strong secondary lead out at second. And it looked like Will Olson pointed down to his Augustana teammate, JT Mix, saying, hey, get ready to cover after the pitch. I might throw it down. Fastball up and in. Drill has to back out of that one. It's two balls, no strikes. So they're actually giving it a double for Sorensen. Here's the 2-0. Fastball on the corner. Makes it 2-1. And that actually does make sense. That was a hard hit ball to the wall. He would have made it to second base anyway. He was actually almost to basically at second base now that I'm thinking about it, replaying it in my head. I was just more concerned about the cutoff and if they were going to get him at the plate. Fastball misses high. It's 3-1. Tom Sun looking good in his first Sunfish appearance this season. Again, didn't play for Augustana this year. So it didn't work with Will Olson as a fastball hits at the knees. Drill was about to toss his bat thinking it might have been a ball, but he nodded saying, yeah, well, that one hit at the knees. That was a nice looking fastball. It's a full count now with two outs, runner at second. Whiskey Jacks still lead by three. Sun checks back, kicks and delivers. Fastball up and in. He lost him. A two-out walk issued to Nolan Drill brings up Rhett Stein, who flew up to Norris McClure at third in foul territory. The Whiskey Jacks through three innings already have five hits. Fastball is foul tipped into the glove of Will Olson. It's no balls, one strike. So Sun is from Beijing, China. It's Tom Sun, just like you would think it's spelled T-O-M-S-U-N as a breaking ball. Looks like it might have slipped out of his hand and it misses high. But from Beijing, played baseball at Nanjing Dongsheng Foreign Language School. The 1-1, one, one, another heater blown by Rhett Stein. It's one ball, two strikes. And while he was playing there, he was coached by former professional player and member of the Chinese national team, Ray Chang, on an MLB China development team. This time a heater misses outside. It's twos across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Sun checks back at second. 
before delivering the 2-2. A fastball, got him looking. Bit of an outside corner pitch. Rhett Stein looked back at the home plate umpire and said that's off, but Tom Sun gets his first strikeout as a Sunfish. No runs cross off one hit, no errors, two left on base. After three full innings from Kraft Field, the Whiskey Jacks lead the Sunfish 3-0 from Grand Forks. It'll be Lee Cohn, Olsen, and McClure to kick off the fourth inning for Sioux Falls. Jack Moffitt still on the mound for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. A breaking ball comes in on Lee Cohn, who is the Sunfish leader in being hit by a pitch. He's the king of being hit by a pitch for a team that thrives in being hit by pitches. They lead the Expedition League. The 1-0 is a fastball in. It's Two balls, no strikes. That misses off the tip of the glove of Rhett Stein. He's now coming out to calm his pitcher. And Jack Moffitt from Seattle, Washington. 6'7 righty. Has pitched three innings of shutout baseball for the Whiskey Jacks. The only base runners have been via three walks and a fielder's choice. Pitch misses just a bit high to Lee Cohn. It's 3-0. And when the Sunfish can have good plate appearances like this where they get ahead in the count and can draw a walk or get a lot of pitches, Lee Cohn takes a fastball at the knees. It's three balls, one strike. When they can get ahead on the count and draw the walks. I mean, look at the back-to-back -back games against the Trappers. Double-digit walks led to double-digit runs scored. Pitch misses up and in, and Lee Cohn draws the leadoff walk. Back-to-back -back innings for the Sunfish. The leadoff man has reached via the walk. And it's Will Olson, who yesterday with one swing of the bat tied the ball game up. Right now, with one swing of the bat, he can make it a one-run ball game. But it's shown, Craft Field has shown a couple times today why it is a pitcher friendly ballpark. The ball just doesn't seem to carry as well. As Olsen fans on a fastball, he kind of nods his head, knowing he just missed that one. That was his pitch. He likes to pull that one into left field, and there's a hefty gap out there in left center. The wind now blowing directly out to center field. As a curveball drops inside, it's one and one. Again, Olsen's first appearance against the Whiskey Jacks this season. Missed all eight games. Wasn't even a part of the team until the three games in Carroll. Here's the one one. Swings just ahead of a curveball that was low. Again, he knows that he was just missed that one. He's Probably a bit upset at himself for chasing that one as well. It's one ball, two strikes. Lee Cohn over at first hasn't really caught the eye of myself or the pitcher Moffitt. 
Jack looks down as he sets. Checks over at first. Lee Cohn now caught off. There he caught the attention. He's being run down by Jelly. The throw over. He dances out of the way, but the tag is made by the shortstop, Dean Bittner. So Lee Cohn, another costly base running mistake for the Sunfish. That's now two on the day. And while the Sunfish lead the Expedition League in stolen bases with 61, they also lead in caught stealing. That marks number 20 on the season. And that actually seems fairly low to what I thought the actual number was. We'll see if we can get that checked out again as a pitch misses low. The 2-2 misses away, it's a full count. And that's more like it, it wasn't just 20. The Sunfish have been caught stealing now 49 times on the season. Lead the Expedition League with 135 stolen bases. Here's the payoff to Olsen. Curveball misses in the dirt. Can't get Olsen to chase. He drops his elbow guard right in front of the left-handed batter's box. And it's back-to-back -back walks issued by Moffitt. If Lee Cohn had been retired, it'd be two runners on with no outs. Norris McClure in that second inning was out number one of the 1-2-3 inning himself, Thompson and Dutka. He flew out to third. Takes a fastball in. It's one ball, no strikes. The 1 0 is a pickoff attempt at first. A late tag by Jelly on Olsen. And Moffitt has only had one appearance against the Sunfish this season. Two and a third innings pitched. Allowed five runs, all of them earned, as a fastball is called a strike on McClure at the knees. He allowed six hits, only issuing four walks, striking out five. But tonight, he's been a bit better. He's only allowed a few base runners, as this one is drilled into the gap in right center field. That's falling for a base hit. Olsen's on his way to third. The throw in is going to be cut off by Bittner from Guajardo. And just like that, Norris McClure gets the first hit of the day for the Sunfish. Runners at the corners. As Moffitt goes three innings of a no-hitter before giving up that one-out single to Norris McClure. That puts the tying run now in the batter's box in the form of Gannon Thompson. It's still a three-run ball game. The Whiskey Jacks lead. A curveball misses low. Thompson likes to chase on those. Good hold off there. Again, it's when the Sunfish can see the ball well and swing at their pitches, force a fastball here or there, that they do well. Ball in the dirt. A late steal by McClure. The throw high. It goes into center field. Will Olsen's on his way home. Norris McClure gets up and goes over to third, and the Sunfish are on the board. It's a 3-1 ball game after the throw from Rhett Stein goes into center field on the delayed steal by Norris McClure. A stolen base and an E1 makes this a 3-1 ball game. It's a 1-0 count. The pitch from Moffitt. Misses low, 2-0. And actually, correction, it's three balls, no strikes. There's the curveball that first missed, then the pitch that hit in the dirt on that throwdown, and now that one, and Thompson's ahead 3-0 with a runner just 90 feet away. Moffitt kicks and delivers. Another breaking ball this time, right across the plate for strike one. Game one of a three-game series tonight between the Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks. They thought their time was up. 
with each other after Carroll, Iowa. This series sprung on them last week. Thompson doesn't chase a breaking ball low, and he draws the one-out walk. Three walks have been issued this inning. The only out coming from Jesus Lee Cohn, dancing a bit too much on the base paths. In that case, it might be a 3-2 ball game with no outs and runners at the corners. Instead, it's one out with the tying run on first base for Kenneth Dutka. He had a long fly out to center field his last time up. Takes a change up high. The Whiskey Jacks have been held scoreless since the first inning when they scored three off of two errors. Now there's an error by Wheat City in this inning, and it allows a run to cross for Sioux Falls. Thompson takes off, a fastball low, no throw by Stein. That's free second base for Gannon Thompson. Two runners in scoring position now for Dutka. And right before he flew out, I was talking about how he has shown that he can both be a dominant force on the mound as well as at the plate. The 2-0 is a fastball that just hits the inside corner. Dutka had to step out away from it, thinking it was about to hit him. He does crowd the plate a bit. Moffat in the windup, winds and delivers. A curveball as Dutka pulls his head on that one. I think he wanted all of it and got a little too aggressive there with that swing. 2-2. Two -two. But on Saturday against the Trappers, time is called a late time as Moffitt was already in his windup, but it is granted. I think there's some questioning from the Whiskey Jacks dugout is, hey, that was a late time. He was already in his windup. Moffitt kicks and delivers. Poked down the third base line, but that's going to be just foul past the leg of Norris McClure, who is starting to creep down the line. But on Saturday, Dutka pitched seven innings of shutout baseball, allowing just three hits. And it waited until the seventh inning for two walks to be allowed. Dutka chops a curveball to the backstop. You probably heard the thud on the microphone. That's the dangers of being right here behind home plate. Get a lot of foul balls hit at you. And sometimes if it's a nice hit foul ball off of a fastball, it makes a very loud bang that can be quite startling. Two balls, two strikes to Dutka. The pitch, fastball, hit into left center field. Drills underneath it, he makes the catch. McClure will tag from third, and he'll score with no contest. It's a 3-2 ball game as Kenneth Dutka drives in a run with a sack fly. Two runs have now scored in this inning. It's just a one-run ball game. After the Sunfish, again, taking advantage of the base on balls. Three walks have been issued by Moffitt, who is now up to six in today's game. Hadn't allowed a run through the first three innings until an error in this game would score Will Olson from third and now a sack fly. Dane Frazier swings and misses on a fastball in. Norris McClure as well, ending the no-hitter for Moffitt, getting things going. So two runs have scored off of just one hit and one error. Thompson still out at second. Got a very liberal lead as a pitch misses in the dirt. It's a 1-1 count. No one's covering Thompson at second. Probably wouldn't be all too wise of him to try and take third. As Jackson Sorensen's playing fairly close to the line. And Rhett Stein's got a bit of a cannon behind the plate. Here's the 1-1. Another heater blown by Frazier. He takes his helmet off, puts it back on, shaking his head, knowing he needs to get a bit of a piece of those at least. It's one ball, two strikes. Getting a bit darker here at Kraft Field as it's still cloudy, overcast overhead. 
Wind starting to pick up again, blowing out to center field. Thompson dancing around, getting the attention of Moffitt. No one's covering at second. There he goes. A fastball up and in. Rhett Stein throws down to third. No slide by Thompson. He's safe. Jackson Sorensen's frustrated as it looks like many people in the Whiskey Jacks dugout are frustrated as well. Mark Reardon's the <laughs> pitching coach for the Whiskey Jacks, putting his hands on his ears as if to imitate the MLB, saying, hey, can we get a replay on that one? A bold choice by Gannon Thompson not to slide. I think if he slides, he's 100% safe. As the field umpire, I think, is getting some words from Jake Jelly at first. Might have given him a warning as well. Two balls, two strikes. Thompson with the stolen base gets him within 90 feet. He's taken home. The pitch grounded to short. Thompson's in safe, charging in his bitner. The throw over pulls Jelly off, and it's a tie ball game. Gannon Thompson, out of everyone on the Sunfish, decides to steal home. He's the second successful swipe of home plate this season. Zeff Hoffpower the first. It's a tie ball game as Frazier also swings at a fastball, slowly drops it over to short. And Dean Bittner was charging in, and it was just a late throw that pulled Jelly off the base. A two-out single by Dane Frazier. Makes it a tie ball game. Also props to Gannon Thompson for stealing home. Benito Garcia swings at the first pitch he sees. A fastball, but he misses. So Thompson in his first game back in quite a bit. He's only played one game in the last five. He hadn't played since Thursday's game against Spearfish. Steals home as Garcia drives this one into center field, but that's lined right at Trey Guajardo for out number three. Three runs cross off two hits, one error, one left on base for the Sunfish. It's a tie ball game from Kraft Field. The Sunfish tie things up in the top of the fourth inning. And it'll be Dean Bittner, Garrett Olson, and the top of the order, Caleb McDowell, due up here in the bottom half of the inning. It was Bittner who was charging in on the slow hit ground ball by Dane Frazier after Gannon Thompson was stealing home. First pitch from Tom Son, a fastball outside. But it was Bittner who was charging in, and his throw, which would have ended the inning and made it just a 3-2 ball game as this one's lined up the middle past the glove of Tom Sun in the center field for a base hit. But if that out had counted, Thompson most likely, his run, we're not 100% sure, I don't think it would have counted. And well, it would just be a 3-2 ball game. But instead a clutch hit by Dane Frazier on the Hit and run, technically, makes it a 3-3. And now a leadoff base hit by Bittner brings up Garrett Olson, who was out number one of a double play in Tom Sun's first inning of work. A fastball hits Anthony's. It's no balls, one strike. 
It was actually here at Kraft Field that Adonis Forte attempted the first ever steal of home in Sunfish franchise history. He was out. And it was actually in Carroll, Iowa, where Mitch Stroh tried swiping it as well. He was out. A curveball is grounded to McClure, who backed up, fires over to second. The relay is not going to be in time. The lead runner is out on the 5-4 fielder's choice. So there's one away. With a runner on first, for the top of the order we go. Kayla McDowell, who has already grounded into a double play today. McDowell 0 for 1 on the ground out. He walked and scored in that three-run first inning for Weed City. Runner goes. A curveball is driven high down the right field line, hooking out of play. Olsen was off on the first pitch. Robbie Laughlin, the third base coach who was given the signs, definitely not wanting another double play ball as the Sunfish turned quite a lot of them. A fastball misses high. It's one ball, one strikes. And you'd think on point streak, they'd tell you how many double plays a team has, well, turned, and it doesn't. As a pickoff attempt, there's no tag by Jesus Lee Cohn. Well, actually, now, hey, now, might have just found him. Sioux Falls has turned a total of, well, now, including today's game, 29 double plays, which is the most in the Expedition League. A fastball on a half swing by McDowell. He checked it, barely brought it off his shoulder but got a piece of it enough to foul it out of play. It's a one ball, two strike count. 29 double plays have been turned by Sioux Falls this season. The Sewer Valley Sabre Dogs have turned the second amount with 24 coming into today. Breaking ball misses high to Olsen. It's a two, two count, or excuse me, to McDowell. Olsen made the catch, stood up and feigned to throw over to first just to keep Garrett Olsen on. Pickoff attempt at first. Again, no tag by Lee Cohn. Olsen just has four stolen bases on the season. Hasn't attempted to go since that first pitch. A fastball has popped up down the right field line. Lee Cohn's hat falls off. Coming over is JT Mix. He makes the sliding grab. JT Mix coming over from second, making the sliding catch in foul territory down the right field line. Benito Garcia was covering second, and Garrett Olsen didn't even move off of the base. He's just been standing on top of first. A nice sliding grab by the Sunfish second baseman. There's two away in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's Trey Guajardo now, who's one for two with a run scored after his single in the first inning. A fastball misses high, no chase there. Seems like... Tom likes to throw a fastball first pitch. He relies hard on the fastball. Typically is missed high on the first pitch every time. A throw over to first. Again, no tag by Lee Cohn. And Olsen hasn't looked like he's tried to go since that first pitch to McDowell. Fastball right across the middle of the plate. It's a 1-1 count. The trees are making it seem like there's a strong breeze out there, but the flag out in center is just slightly moving. Another heater on the inside. It's a 1-2 count. Three runs off two hits, two errors for Sioux Falls. Three runs off six hits, one error so far for Wheat City. One ball, two strikes. Tom Sun looks over at first. Runner goes. A ground ball into the... Awaiting Jake Jelly in the on-deck circle. He bare hands it before tossing it to a teammate who then tosses it back to Will Olson and hands it to the umpire who puts it in his pocket. You guys just got play-by-play -play on just a foul ball and the trip the ball took. You're welcome. Here's the one-two again. Fastball high. Looked like Guajardo wanted to chase that one. 
a good hold by him. It's a two two count. Olsen getting a little more aggressive with his secondary leads over at second, or excuse me, first base. The pitch from Sun brushes back Guajardo. It's a full count. Sunfish pitching, not known for hitting batters. As of recent, they are a bit more. They've only hit three Whiskey Jacks this season. Runner goes. The three twos popped up. Garcia calling off the rest of the infield. He's still at short, drifting back a bit, making the catch for out number three. So a nice sliding grab by JT Mix. Keep the Whiskey Jacks scoreless in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's no runs off one hit, no errors, one left on base. After four full from Kraft Field, it's 3-3 on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream. After allowing three runs in the top of the fourth inning, that'll be all she wrote for Jack Moffitt, who's relieved by Ryan Reedman. Teammate out of Gonzaga, actually, the 5'11 lefty. Misses outside to JT Mix to kick off this fifth inning. Moffitt's final stat line on the day. Nope, I had a find that tab as JT Mix chases a breaking ball outside. He's frustrated with himself on that one. Moffitt, four innings pitched, allowing three runs. None of them were earned off two hits, six walks, and a strikeout. A change up laid off by JT Mix. It's two balls, one strike. Again, the Sunfish taking advantage of the walk, especially in that fourth inning. They do struggle against lefties, though, as a curveball drops in at the chest of JT Mix. It's a 2-2 count. The 5'11 lefty throws a breaking ball in the dirt. It's a full count now. Is 1 0 on the season through two games. A 9 ERA through four innings. Three strikeouts, six walks allowed this season. He last pitched against the Trappers on June 27th. Then he loses JT Mix on a ball outside. Three straight innings that the leadoff man has walked for Sioux Falls. All three times that leadoff man, well, has not done all too well, and that looks like it's going to be it for JT Mix. I think something on 
on the slide. It might have hurt him or something as Walker Bullington came out to give him a high five. That'll be all she wrote. Jonathan Brandon will now be in the game for Mix. He'll be pinch running at first base. And again, one can only assume it looks like Mix might be, it looks like he's twisting or something, might be something in his lower back, or maybe just hurt his leg. Again, he came running far from second base before making a sliding catch in foul territory. We talked about leadoff men getting caught on the base pass. Well, Jonathan Brandon leads the Sunfish in getting caught on the base pass as a fastball misses low to Declan Beers. Beers 0 for 1 with a strikeout looking and a walk. He was caught stealing back in the first inning. The 1-0. Breaking ball misses in. It's 2-0. The lefty-lefty matchup proving so far to favor Declan. All season long, the Sunfish have struggled a bit against the lefties, and right now it actually hasn't been bothering them all too much as Beers chases a fastball low. It's two balls, one strike. Errors have proved to be costly once more in this season series between the Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks. It was in that first series all the way back at the beginning of the season as a fastball runs in, it's three balls, one strike. It was a game where the Whiskey Jacks would route the Sunfish and the Sunfish would have quite a few errors in that game. And then in game one of the Carroll Iowa series, Sioux Falls would have five errors including a costly one in the top of the ninth, which put the Whiskey Jacks ahead by one run, costing a run and costing them the game. A fastball hits at the knees. It's a full count to Declan Beers. Jonathan Brandon still over at first base. No outs in the top of the fifth. It's a tie ball game. The payoff grounded to the right side. That's through the hole for a base hit. Jonathan Brandon's going to stop at second, but that gets by Viano. Beers is on his way to second. The throw is going to be high. The tag late. And two, the two runners are now in scoring position as Owen Viano was charging in right field and the ball got by him. So an error by Viano, the second of the day for the Whiskey Jacks, puts Declan Beers at second, Jonathan Brandon all the way over at third. It was just going to be a routine single. And instead, Beers makes his way all the way over to second on the... E9. Jesus Lee Cohn takes the ball low. So a single in an E9. Makes it runners in scoring position with no outs for Lee Cohn, who swings at a slider low. Sunfish always struggling with the low breaking balls this season. Gets him to strike out quite a few times. And again, coming out of a lefty's hand, that's not ideal for Sioux Falls. Here's the 1-1. This time a fastball is swung on and missed. Lee Cohn said some things I don't think I want to repeat on the air. So he's frustrated at missing that one. One ball, two strikes to the big man who yesterday went three for five with three straight singles. The one, two, he chases another breaking ball low and away for out number one. Good location there by Reedman For his first strike out of the day, it brings up Will Olson, who's 0 for one with a walk. He was the first run scored by the Sunfish in that three run fourth inning. He comes up with two runners in scoring position, one out and a win that's blowing strongly out to center field. He swings through a breaking ball. And 
man, just the movement on these pitches by Reedman. He's got a nice command of the zone, and he's getting the Sunfish to chase. He's been throwing a lot of them low. Hasn't really given one up in the zone yet. Curveball bounces off the plate. It's one ball, one strike. Olsen smiling on that one, probably thinking that he wanted to swing. Had to lay off of it. Things have seemed pretty tame between the two teams today. Tempers started to flare in that three-game series a few weekends ago as the pitch misses low and away. It's 2-1. The Whiskey Jacks weren't too happy with Gannon Thompson being called safe at third. Which it was a close play and a bold choice by Thompson not to slide. Here's the 2-1. Another pitch low and away. It's 3-1. A good eye again by Olsen. And when the Sunfish, I've mentioned it quite a few times already on the broadcast, when they can have this eye at the plate, and not chase these pitches, man, well, they draw those walks, and when they draw walks, look what happens. They score three runs. Here's the 3-1. This one's drilled high to left center and deep at the wall. It's off the wall. The umpire's blocking my view. The throw in, Declan Beers is stopped at third. Will Olsen goes all the way to second with an RBI double. That's the one downfall of being at field level is that the home plate umpire on fly balls like that to left center field stand right in front of my view. Couldn't tell if that one went over as Drill and Guajardo were given chase, but it looked like that bounced right off the wall in left center field, a very hard hit ball by Will Olson. And with this wind, it's now blowing straight out to left center field. I'm surprised that one didn't carry further. Instead, it's a one RBI double for Will Olson, and the Sunfish have their first lead of the game. It's 4 3. There's a mound visit. His pitching coach, Mark Reardon, goes out to calm his lefty. Mark, the assistant coach at Wren Lake College in Illinois. If that sounds familiar to you, Sunfish fans, because that's where head coach Walker Bowlington's the head coach. Mark the assistant there, Norris McClure and Reardon's gabbing at each other as Mark makes the trot back in. Nothing unfriendly. Of course, being the assistant coach of Walker Bullington, the Sunfish love him. How can they not like his assistant? Two runners in scoring position once more. Sunfish now lead 4-3 for Norris McClure, who takes the first pitch into the gap in left center field for a base hit. Declan Beer scores, drills up and firing. That's going to be cut off by Dean Bittner at second. Will Olsen scores on the two RBI single by Norris McClure. The Sunfish, back-to-back -back innings, have scored three runs, and there's still just one out here in the top of the fifth inning. The bats have come back alive after seemingly being extinguished last night in Pierre. McClure gets a hit, and that extends his hitting streak to five games. Gannon Thompson takes a pitch low. It's one ball, no strikes. That gets away from Stein, but McClure stays put at first base. Olsen's hitting streak with that double is extended to six. That's his third double in those six games as well. Another pitch misses low to Gannon Thompson. It's two balls, no strikes. The 2-0 to Thompson, who stole home earlier in this game to tie it up, takes a ball low. It's three balls and no strikes. Thompson has been walking a lot as of late. In seven of the last eight games, he's drawn a walk. Well, now if you include today, eight of the last nine, and four pitches, four balls, he earns the base on balls 
with just one out still, and now there's two runners on for Kenneth Dutka. Dutka made it a one-run one ball game with his sack fly his last time up. And now he's got a runner in scoring position in the form of Norris McClure. Had the only grand slam in Sunfish history in the ninth frame against the Spearfish Sasquatch. He's brushed back on a fastball in. So it took just three innings for the Sunfish to get back in the swing of things. And well, by the swing of things, they weren't getting many hits last inning. Took advantage of an error. As a pitch misses low, it's 2-0 on six straight pitches that have missed the zone from Ryan Reedman. Six three ball game with one out in the top of the fifth inning from Kraft Field in Grand Forks. Dutka takes a fastball at the knees for strike one. In the series against Wheat City, Dutka had a home run on Father's Day. He pops one up out of play. It's a 2-2. Had a home run on Father's Day in that game one. There were three long balls hit that day. One by Kenneth Dutka, one by Jonathan Brandon, and one by Adonis Forte. Forte and Dutka's were in front of their dads. Kenneth's dad, Pete, and his mom and brother were all in town. Since that Wheat City series, Dutka fouls off a curveball, keeping the count even. So they got here for that series beginning on June 19th. And they stayed until Dutka's final game pitching, which was on Saturday. Here's the 2-2, curve ball in. Dutka had to turn away, almost got hit. It's a full count. Again, another lefty-lefty matchup with Reedman and Dutka. Wind still gently now blowing out to left field. Here's the payoff. A foul ball off the foot of Dutka. He's starting to limp up the first base line. He's trying to put on a brave face as the home plate umpire will quick dust off a clean plate to give Dutka a bit of time. Well, that was cool that his family got to make the long drive up from Texas. Stay a couple weeks, watch a few games, even travel on the road a bit. Here's the payoff again. Inside fastball, another walk as Dutka now still limping down to first. He's picking up his legs a little bit, trying to run out the foul ball that was off the foot. And now the bases are loaded with just one out. And that'll be all she wrote as Robbie Laughlin is coming out, he makes the call to the bullpen, and we'll see who the pitcher is right after this. Ryan Reedman can't make it through an inning. He can just get one out, allowing three runs. We'll see who relieves him right after this on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks live stream.
Ryan Reedman's night is done. After just a third of an inning, allowing three earned runs off three hits, three walks, and a strikeout. He might have more runs added to his total, depending on what Jackson Harbin can do. Harbin, the righty out of Carson Newman. 6'3", 190. Inherits the bases loaded. He drops a curveball in on the inside corner to Dane Frazier, who's got the bases loaded with just one out here in the top of the fifth inning, a fifth inning in which the Sunfish have already scored three. Here's the 0-1. Bounces in the left-handed batter's box. Knocked down by Stein. It's ones across the board. Through eight and two-thirds innings pitch, Harbin has an 8.3 ERA, walking 16, striking out seven. Blows a fastball by a swinging Frazier. It's 1-2. His last appearance came last weekend against the Pier Trappers. He allowed three earned runs off one hit, four walks. Couldn't record an out in that appearance. The Whiskey Jacks would lose 10 to six. Here's the one, two to Frazier. He doesn't chase. This one gets away from Stein. Here comes McClure. Rolls all the way to the backstop. McClure will slide in. And the wild pitch will make it a 7-3 ball game as Thompson and Dutka advance to third and second respectively. Morris McClure scores the fourth run of the inning and it's now a 2-2 count with just one out. Here's the 2-2, fastball in, that gets to the backstop. Here comes Thompson. Thompson's not gonna slide, he crosses easily. That's his second time scoring, he stole home in the last inning, he has now scored twice. Dutka is over at third as Red Stein's now going to walk out to talk to his pitcher who has thrown two consecutive wild pitches. So just like that, two runs are added to the ledger of Ryan Reedman. The last runner he's accountable for is 90 feet away and Dane Frazier has a full count with just one out. Here's the payoff from Harbin. A check swing gets a fastball at the knees. I don't know if they're calling that on the swing or if they're calling it just to call it. Either way, it was a strike. And Dane Frazier goes down via the punch out for out number two. That brings up Benito Garcia. The Sunfish have officially gone through their entire order in this inning. Curveball drops in for strike one. This inning began with JT Mix walking. He was pinch ran for by Jonathan Brandon. Declan Beers would single and then reach second on an E9. Here's another wild pitch. Dutka is going to come in and score. It's 9 to 3, Sunfish. So now the Final stat line once more. It'll be a third of an inning, three hits, six earned runs, three walks, and one strikeout for Ryan Reedman. The 1-1, one, one, a fastball on the inside corner. It's one and two to Benito Garcia. Garcia's 0 for two, has flown out to left and flown out to center, both on some hard hit balls. Benny's had some nice bat speed in his last few outings. Here's the one, two. Another wild pitch bounces in front of the left handed batter's box and comes bouncing right in front of me in the backstop. There's no runners to advance this time and we got twos across the board. Six runs have crossed on just two hits and one error, three hits, excuse me, and an error. As Benito Garcia lines this one into center field, that's falling this time for a base hit. He's lined all three of his at-bats. This time he gets one to fall on a single up the middle. We're back to the top of the lineup, but it'll be Jonathan Brandon at the plate this time. 
Brandon yesterday. He had five plate appearances, and I didn't even realize this until after the game. He only swung the bat once. Takes a fastball at the knees. Five plate appearances, only swung the bat once, and he went 0 for 1 with a strikeout. He would walk three straight times and be hit by a pitch. Was almost hit by a pitch twice yesterday. And that's just what baffled me is that, well, it was only one swing. So he has a check swing, fouling it to the backstop. Back netting, it's no balls, two strikes to J-Bo. Batter number 10 of this inning. It's taken two pitchers for the Whiskey Jacks to get two outs. Benito Garcia is at first off of his single. Sunfish lead by six. Fastball high, doesn't get Brandon to chase. Some nice velocity there by Harbin. Sunfish have come back from this one keeping the Whiskey Jacks scoreless through three and scoring nine unanswered after allowing three in the first inning. The one, two, fastball right down the middle, gets Brandon looking. 10 at bats, three strikeouts are what gets it done, but it's the number of walks that really got it done for the Sunfish. Sunfish scored six off of one, two, three, four hits. One error, one left on base. It's 9-3 as we head to the bottom of the fifth from Kraft Field. The Sunfish have scored nine unanswered and hold a six-run lead as we're in the bottom of the fifth inning with Jake Jelly leading things off. Tom Sun drops a change up inside, but it misses to the big man Jelly. He walked his last time up before being out at third base. The 1-0 is swung on and missed on the slider low. So it was three hitless innings before Jack Moffitt would allow th three unearned runs off of an error in the fourth. Here's the 1-1, a fastball. Just off the outside edge of the plate makes it a 2-1 count. That's the one nice thing I do like about being down here at field level as I A, get to see the move in other pitches, it makes it identifiable a bit more. Here's a 2-1, a fastball blown by the swinging jelly. It's 2-2. Two -two. That, and then I get to see the location quite a bit better so I can for sure know where they miss. And then maybe get a little critical of the strike zone. It's not something I should be doing, but it's something I tend to do quite a bit. This is a new umpiring crew that the Sunfish have never seen this season. They've been pretty good so far. The 2-2 is lined over the head of a jumping Norris McClure down the left field line for a base hit. Jelly's on his way to second. It gets by Declan Beers and rolls all the way to the corner. Jelly's going to hold up at second with a double. A hard hit ball down the left field line rolls all the way to the corner. Beers struggled with it a little bit. 
And it's a double as time is called so Jelly can get his batting gloves to his first base coach. It was yesterday against the Pier Trappers that the Sunfish struggled giving off leadoff doubles. It was the first inning, a leadoff double. Second inning, Bennett Osborne would reach on an E7. That would basically be a double as he would reach second. The fifth inning, Bennett Osborne would then have a leadoff double. So the two-bagger proved fatal yesterday. Hasn't been too much of a problem today yet as the first pitch misses inside to Owen Viano, who singled and scored in the first inning before flying out his last time up. Pickoff attempt at second as Jake Jelly was leading off just a bit too much for the liking of Tom Sun. Jonathan Brandon is in at second base. He pinch ran for JT Mix. Jesus Lee Cohn's taking some practice swings over at first as Viano fouls one over the netting above us. Nine runs off seven hits, two errors for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Three runs off the same amount of hits and same amount of errors for the Whiskey Jacks. It's been the walk that has proved helpful for the Sunfish as a changeup is fouled off by Viano, making it a 1 2 count. Sun relieved Andalo Santangelo who could only make it through an inning of work, allowing all three runs. Sun has kept the Whiskey Jack scoreless through three. Here's the one, two. He fouls off another breaking ball. Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks have had fairly similar seasons. Struggled a bit in the first half, but caught a little wind leading into the second as a fastball misses high and is taken for a ball by Viano, evening the count at two. Both teams are just a game under 500. The Whiskey Jacks have played two less games than Sioux Falls. Sunfish sit at 17 and 18 overall and 16 and 17 for Wheat City as another ball is fouled off, this time to the back left backstop. Pitching coach Tyler Olmstead comes out and tosses it over to the Whiskey Jacks dugout. Both teams are six and four in their last 10 games. Both have only lost one game since the second half has started. A ground ball to Benito Garcia is gonna move Jelly over to third as Garcia throws out Viano at first. Jelly moves just 90 feet away now from scoring, and it'll be Jackson Sorensen, who's two for two on the day, with a single and a double. Sioux Falls kicked off the first half of the season with their only win against the Spearfish Sasquatch. They took game three out of the three game series. Pitches swung on and missed by Sorensen for strike one. And then they would take the first two games against the Trappers on Friday and Saturday before dropping yesterday's. The 0-1 is a fastball high, taken for a ball by Sorensen. Good eye there at the plate. It's always the thing that surprises me about the high fastball is everyone knows it's a bad pitch. It's a tough one to lay off of. It's this time he swings through a slider for strike two. Runner on third, one out. Sunfish lead by six here in the bottom of the fifth inning after scoring nine unanswered. A breaking ball low and in caught by Will Olson on the swing and a miss by Sorensen. He's retired for the first time today. That's strikeout number two for Tom Sun, his first since the third inning. Only three Whiskey Jacks have gone down on strikeouts. Santangelo could get only get Jelly 
to swing on a breaking ball, and here's two outs on a changeup that misses outside to Nolan Drill. Drill would reach in the first inning on an E4 before being walked in the third. He takes a fastball right down Main Street for a strike. Then Jesus Lee Cohen between pitches. I'm just kind of letting my glance kind of keeps going over there to first, and he's taking a practice swing here and there. A 1 0 curveball is taken in the dirt. It's two balls, one strike. And that's some nice movement on it. It looked like it was coming in at the knees before dropping late. Right down to the feet. Here's the 2 1. A heater misses away. It's 3 1. Sun in his first outing for the Sunfish has kept the Whiskey Jacks scoreless. It's a fastball, is swung on and missed. It's a full count. He's been suiting up since basically the second half of the season started. Caleb Kranz pitching in that Spearfish series before heading home. Here's the payoff. That's off the mask of Will Olson. A dead ball. I think they're calling it a foul. Out as Drill checks the handle of his bat. I think he kind of went in, got a piece of it with the handle, and it's a foul ball off the mask of Will Olson. No sound really comes into this press box. So on a pitch like that, it just looked like Olsen missed it with his glove. Here's the payoff. He lost him. A fastball low gives Drill his second walk of the game, and now there's runners at the corners with two outs for Rhett Stein. It was Stein who struck out looking in the third to end the third inning. That time he left two stranded as well, and well, now he's got runners at the corners. Norris McClure moving back to his spot at third base, not holding on Jelly. Lee Cohn is holding on Drill at first. A sharply hit ball into right field will be hit right at Gannon Thompson, who makes the catch. And there's two runners left stranding after Rhett Stein flies out on the first pitch he sees. No runs cross off one hit, no errors, two left on. After five innings, it's 9-3 Sunfish. In the top of the sixth inning, it'll be Declan Beers, Jesus Lee Cohn, and Will Olson to lead it off for the Sioux Falls Sunfish as they lead by six. They've scored nine unanswered through the past two innings. As a fastball just misses outside out of the hand of Jackson Harbin, who pitched for two outs to close out the fifth inning, relieving Ryan Reedman, who can only get one out. In that six-run inning for the Sunfish, Beers swings and misses on the heater. It's a 1-1 count. And in the top of the sixth inning, we'll take a quick trip around the Expedition League, see how everyone else is doing, kicking off. Well, actually, that's right. 
I'm mistaken. It's a quick trip. It's just the Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks tonight as a breaking ball drops in. Beers gets caught looking. It's one ball, two strikes. Today was a built-in off day for the rest of the Expedition League. Everyone's eyes are now on the Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks. As here's the one-two from Harbin. Fouled off by Beers. He stays alive. This now marks 14 straight days of baseball for the Sunfish. Last Monday, their off day was taken over by a rain makeup, rain out makeup between the Sunfish and the Fremont Moo. The one two misses in. That fastball was close. Good eye by Beers as he's been knowing the zone tonight. Only struck out looking once. He singled and reached second on an E9. Takes a fastball up and away. It's a full count. So last week, the off day was taken over by a rain out makeup. And now today, the schedule for some reason it just turned into the Whiskey Jacks and the Sunfish on back-to-back -back days of baseball as time is called. Here's the payoff to Beers. Check swing in the dirty saying he went. It's a drop third strike. Beers is running down the throw from Stein in time to Jelly. Beers knew he went, immediately dropped his bat and took off for first as the ball rolled away from Stein to his left. Stein quickly got up before throwing it down to Jake Jelly for out number one. That's strikeout number three for Harbin. Everyone in the fifth inning who went down, went down on the strikeout as Jesus Lee Cohn takes a pitch in the dirt for ball one. He was the first out of that fifth inning. It wasn't until all the runs had scored then that the other two outs were had as Lee Cohn pops this one up to shallow right field. Viano looks like he might have lost it, recovers and makes the catch. It's when the sun starts to go down and it gets dark here in Grand Forks that it's tough to see the ball. And well, since it's a cloudy sky, it might be even tougher as well, the white ball might get lost in the gray clouds depending on how high you hit it. Two up, two down for the Sunfish and it's Will Olson who doubled to score J Jonathan Brandon in the fifth inning to get the scoring going for the Sunfish. A fastball taken right down the middle for strike one. So 14 straight days. The Sunfish will, Sunfish will play 16 games in 15 days before having Wednesday and Thursday off this week. Here's the 0-1. A fastball grounded hard down the third baseline foul. Well, especially after a six-and-a-half-hour bus ride today, we'll see if that exhaustion starts to kick up, or catch up, excuse me, with the Sunfish. A fastball low and in is fouled off by Olsen, who stays alive at 0-2. The majority of that, well, these past 14 days have been at home at Karis Park. It wasn't until now this past weekend that the Sunfish were really hitting the road. The 0-2 is a fastball high taken for ball one. The 14 days began with two games at home against the Trappers for the Sunfish before traveling on the road and getting a victory at the state's capital of Pierce, South Dakota. Olsen fouls another one off. It was then a three-game series against the Hastings Sodbusters. And the last weekend of June, that would kick off another long homestand. Sunfish would take two out of three in that one before going to Fremont last Monday and beating the move for the first time this season. Ball bounces in front of the left-handed batter's box into the glove of Rhett Stein for ball number two. It's twos across the board. Then it was that three-game series at home against Spearfish in which the Sunfish would just take one to kick off the second half of the season 1-0 before closing out the homestand with a win against Pier 
from Karis Park. A curveball drops low. It's a full count. Olsen battling off pitches with an 0-2 count has now taken three straight balls. And with two outs, Maitra, a critical two-out walk. Here's the payoff from Harbin. Swung on, popped up, left field. Shallow left field as Bittner's going to go back. And he's going to make the catch for out number three. Again, blocked by the umpire on that one. But I saw Bittner running in with it. A three up, three down inning for the Whiskey Jacks. That's the first inning since the third that the Sunfish haven't scored. It's still 9-3 as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Tom Sun, in his first outing for the Sunfish, returns for his fifth inning of work. He came in to relieve Andalo Santangelo and has thrown five, or excuse me, four scoreless innings. He's allowed a couple hits, actually a hit in just each inning of work, just a lone hit. Breaking ball misses high to the leadoff, Dean Bittner. Bittner sporting his Signature pink cleats. And here's the 1-0 from Sun. A fastball at the knees called a strike. The Weed City Whiskey Jacks, though. They're, well, they're ha probably happy to be home. It's never fun being on the road for too long as if pitch misses low and away. It's two balls, one strike. But in fact, the Whiskey Jacks actually thrive a bit more when they're on the road. Again, in their eight-game road stand as a fastball misses at the ankles, it's 3-1 to Dean Bittner. That eight road games, they went 5-3. and three. And they're actually sub-500 here at Craft Field. The 3-1, a fastball in, and it's a leadoff walk to Bittner. It'll be the nine hitter Garrett Olson who singled before being out number one of the double play in the second inning and reaching on a fielder's choice in the fourth. But here at Kraft Field, the Whiskey Jacks are just five and eight. Most of those coming, those wins coming against the Sunfish, a foul tip into the glove of Will Olson. Puts, well, the other Olsen, Garrett Olsen, behind 0-1. And, and on the road with their five wins on the road, they've improved to 11-9 in road games. So, you know, it's always good to be home as a changeup just misses away. It's one ball, one strike. It's always good to be home, but I guess for Wheat City, they'll see if they can somehow come from behind against the Sunfish trailing by six. A ground ball up the third base line will be caught foul by Norris McClure. It's a 1-2 count. 
Sun will get a new ball. Olsen making the catch in his glove on the toss in by Tom. Kind of over his shoulder like a wide receiver. One ball, two strikes. Sun checking over at first. And the pitch, another breaking ball fouled. This time into the bare hand of Tyler Olmstead once more. Olmstead in between innings <laughs> kind of came by the glass and was looking at me. I think he was trying to tell us that it was a 10-2 ball game. He was just trying to put more runs on the board for the Sunfish. He was joking around, of course. The 1-2 swung on far in front of it was Olsen. That's strikeout number three on the day for Tom Sun. We're back to the top of the order with Caleb McDowell. who in the last series against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks from Carroll, Iowa, well, he batted leadoff in all of those games and seemed to thrive. A ground ball, one hop into Norris McClure's glove, the throw over to second. He got on the stretching Lee Cone at first, not in time. Again, it was a close play at second as McClure on the slow hopper into his glove was slow to relay it to second. JT, or excuse me, Jonathan Brandon on the 5-4. That wasn't JT Mix. JT Mix started over there at second. JT Mix, or Jonathan Brandon, there we go, confusing myself there. Was again a bit slow on the relay as well over to first. A fastball hits the inside corner to Trey Guajardo. Two outs, runner at first. Ground ball, sharply hit to Brandon. He comes up with it, fires it to Lee Cohn for out number three. So it's just the leadoff walk and the fielder's choice that put people on. It's the first inning that Tom Sun is not allowed to hit. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. After six full from Grand Forks, it's the Sioux Falls Sunfish nine, the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks three. Norris McClure kicks things off in the top of the seventh inning from Kraft Field. David Coyer on the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. McClure takes a fastball right down the middle from Jackson Harbin. Harbin came in to relieve Ryan Reedman, who could only go a third of an inning back in the fifth as McClure fouls one off on a little check swing. He's down 0-2. The Whiskey Jacks have not been able to score a run since their three-run first inning, taking advantage of a couple of errors by the Sioux Falls Sunfish as McClure takes a curve ball far and deep, but hooking just foul. That looked like that one over the wall just to the right of the 330 sign. Pulled it just a bit too much as Harbin left a curveball where he probably shouldn't have. McClure gets his shot again on the 0-2. Harbin winds and delivers a fastball high. No take by McClure. It's one ball, two strikes. A 
The Sunfish don't have, I was talking about the road record for the Whiskey Jacks, and while they thrive on the road, as a fastball is blown by McClure. First strikeout, number four on the day for Jackson Harbin, and out number one in this seventh inning. It'll be Gannon Thompson, who flew out his first time up before walking twice and scoring twice. And actually, his first time that he scored, it was when he was stealing home, and then Dane Frazier hit successfully to make sure that Thompson's run counted in that three-run fourth inning as the fastball misses high. In fact, if Thompson doesn't score in that fourth inning, the Sunfish would have been trailing by one, and who knows if they would have been able to have their rally in the fifth. So pitch just misses low and away to Thompson. He's ahead, two balls, no strikes. But on the road, the Sunfish, seven and nine, not helping with last night's loss. Would have been an even eight and eight if they could have come out and swept the trappers as a curveball drops in. It's two balls, one strike. It's home sweet home at Karis Park in Sioux Falls where the Sunfish are 10 and 9. Another curveball drops in and Thompson's caught looking. It's a 2-2 two -two count. And here at Craft Field, the Sunfish only have two wins and it was the last two in that five game road series against the Whiskey Jacks as a fastball is swung on by Mist. Back to back strikeouts on the heater for Jackson Harbin. He's got some nice velo on that fastball. He's blown it by McLaren Thompson in this inning. And it's Kenneth Dutka, who's just 0 for 1 with a fly out. He had a sack fly in the fourth and a walk and scored his last time up. Gets underneath one, drives it down the right field line. It's hooking a bit. But it's caught in fair territory by Garrett Olson for out number three. Another three up, three down inning for the six seven, or the, excuse me, five six seven hitters. So fly out to second base. And it's stretching time at Kraft Field. The Sunfish lead by six. Jake Jelly leads it off for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks for his third time today. He's let off the inning in the third and the fifth. In fact, yep, since the second inning, it's been kind of the same pattern. It's been the eight, nine, one, two in the second, the fourth and the sixth, and then it's been the four, or the three, four, five, six, seven, the other two as a ball misses the zone, it's one ball, no strikes to Jelly. I love when this happens, and it's usually when I notice it that it stops happening. It's just a nice pattern in the scorebook. Here's the 1-0 and misses away. 2-0 is Tom Sun is in his sixth inning of relief. He's allowed just four hits in that time. Has not allowed a run. The 2-0. Fastball low and away. Jelly's ahead. Three balls, no strikes.
once again this would be roughly around the time that I would go take a trip around the Expedition League again but it's just this game tonight four straight pitches from Sun and Jake Jelly draws the leadoff walk every inning the leadoff man has reached for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks it was a walk by Caleb McDowell in the first a single by Garrett Olson in the second a walk in the third a single in the fourth a double in the fifth a walk in the sixth and now a walk in the seventh as Will Olson goes to calm down his Augustana teammate Tom Sun Sun is now up to Quick math, set, or 83 pitches. In just five innings. His first pitch is lined past Benito Garcia at short. That's going to be a base hit. First two are aboard. That's the first hit for the Whiskey Jacks since the double by Jake Jelly in the fifth inning. And the first two are aboard for Jake Jackson, excuse me, Sorensen. That looks like that's going to be all she wrote for Tom's son. He allows the first two on. And hey, in his first inning of, or first outing as a Sunfish, he gets a handshake from Walker Bullington, his catcher Will Olson. He's going around the infield now, shaking everybody's hand, and everyone, I think, is telling him just how good of a job he did his first time out. Tom is going to leave the field with a smile on his face, and it's going to be Jorge Galindo coming into relief. He'll inherit runners on first and second. When we return in the bottom of the seventh inning, it's still a 9-3 ball game. The Sunfish lead when we return from Craft Field. Tom Sun's first outing as a Sunfish. He gets through five innings, allowing five hits, five walks, and three strikeouts. He has not allowed a run, but with the first two on here in the bottom of the seventh inning, if either of them will score, they will be credited to Sun, so we'll keep you updated as the inning goes on. It'll be Jorge Galindo, who will see Jackson Sorensen for the first time today. Galindo in his sixth appearance drops a breaking ball just inside. He looks a bit confused as to where that one missed. Looks like he was painting the inside corner. But it's called a ball. It's 1-0. Galindo in five appearances has gone 12 and two-thirds innings. Has the lowest ERA on the team. Has another one misses outside. It's two balls, no strikes. Lowest ERA on, on the team of Someone who has, well, more than just two appearances. 2.13 ERA. Cannon Thompson, Dane Frazier, and Norris McClure each have a zero as a curveball is swung on and missed. To the lefty Sorensen, he chases it outside. Two balls, one strike, no outs in the bottom of the seventh with runners on first and second. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks lead, or excuse me, trail by six to the Sunfish. A fastball is swung on and missed. It's a 2-2 count. 
still overcast above, but you can tell the sun's officially starting to set as some of the clouds above and to our right are turning a nice shade of orange. Actually it looks kind of pretty, especially with the lights shining down on Craft Field. Galindo checks back at Jelly at second and delivers a fastball high and away. It's a full count. Glindo has only walked four this season, struck out nine. He's one and one on the year. He's allowed just three earned runs. Seven of them unearned. The payoff pitch misses high. He has walked the bases loaded. So for the first time today, the first three batters in an inning reach as Walker Bullington is going to come out early to talk to his pitcher. And now Galindo, as of recent, or at least what Bullington has told me, is that he has been dealing with some shoulder troubles. And I think Walker's just coming out just to check to make sure he's okay. Bullington's going to now walk back with his catcher Olsen back to the plate, give Galindo a bit more time. And I, th I think that's just solely what that mound visit was for, just to make sure Galindo's arm was okay after one batter. I think he was just having some shoulder soreness. And then when I was talking to Jorge about it earlier this week, he said, no, I'm good. Still hasn't pitched in a little bit. Bases are loaded as a breaking ball misses high to Nolan Drill, who has walked twice and reached on the knee four back in the first inning. Lindo hasn't pitched since June 30th against the Sasquatch. This ball is chopped to the backstop. It's a 1-1 count. Nine runs off seven hits, two errors for Sioux Falls. Three runs off eight hits, two errors for the Whiskey Jacks. The Whiskey Jacks hold a two-game lead in the season series. The 1-1 is a fastball right down Main Street for strike two. Whiskey Jacks have taken five out of the eight against the Sunfish, secured what was thought to be the series win with a series win in Carroll, Iowa. A curveball at the knees gets Drill looking. He's put down for the first time today, and that's strikeout number one for Jorge Galindo. And with the bases loaded with one out, it's Rhett Stein who's 0 for 3 on the day. A breeze blown out to center field. A long ball would still make it a two-run ball game. As Galindo drops one in inside, it just misses the zone. It's one ball, no strikes. Galindo winds and deals. A fastball that's popped up into right field. Thompson and Dutka. Dutka calls off Thompson, catches it in right center. Jelly's going to take from third. The throw cut off by Lee Cone. They got a rundown. Viano was trying to advance as McClure is going to take him out. It's a double play. The run does score. Jake Jelly scores on the tag out. But so a fly out to Rhett Stein in center field. Scores Jake Jelly on the sack fly. And then it was on the throw in that Viano was caught off trying to go to third. And McClure would run him down and take him out. So one run will score on one hit, no errors, with one left on base for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. It's now 9-4. The Sunfish still lead as we head to the eighth inning from Grand Forks.
Leading off the eighth inning, it'll be Dane Frazier, Benito Garcia, and we go to the top of the order with Jonathan Brandon. The Sunfish lead only by five now after one run comes in on the sack fly. It's a pitch that misses low as Jackson Harbin returns. And just like his counterpart, Tom Sun, for the Sunfish, Harbin has been doing some damage. Eden relief for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. His pitch misses low. It's 2-0 to Dane Frazier. Harbin, since coming in, has pitched two and two-thirds innings and has allowed just one hit, striking out five in the process. He was on the mound when a lot of the runs scored in that fifth inning as a curveball drops in for strike one. But they were not credited to him as they were Ryan Reedman's to begin with. So he's been doing some nice long relief work. The 2 1 is a fastball low and in. And Dane Frazier is ahead three balls, one strike. Dane walked in the third, struck out in the fifth, singled in the fourth. After having a plate appearance in those three, this is the first time since. Takes a fastball at the knees. He thought it missed low. He was trotting down to first base. Instead, he has to turn right around, pick up his bat, and face Harbin for the 3-2 pitch. Doesn't look like there's any action in the Sunfish bullpen anymore. Walker Bullington will most likely go with Jorge Galindo for his next two innings. The payoff is fouled off, the fastball. That goes into the grandstand above us. And it'll be Frazier and Harbin once more. Harbin through two and two thirds. Was at 47 pitches, that was 48 as Frazier pops one into shallow right field. Coming back to get it is Garrett Olson for out number one. And going back to the top of the fifth inning, Harbin has now retired eight straight as Benito Garcia comes up with one out. He came in to face Dane Frazier in the fifth. He struck out Frazier. Benito Garcia would single. A few wild pitches would score the runs for the Sunfish. McClure, Thompson, and Dutka, who were on with the bases loaded, would cross. But other than that, he's been dealing. A fastball inside, no swing by Garcia. It's still called a strike on the inside corner. So after the single by Garcia, it was a strikeout to Jonathan Brandon, a strikeout to Declan Beers, two flyouts, back-to-back -back strikeouts to McLaren Thompson as Garcia pops this one up, but it's going to go just out of play. Looked like it might have stayed in just shy of the Whiskey Jacks dugout. Jelly was coming in, but it goes out of play. The flyout by Kenneth Dutka and then a flyout by Dane Frazier makes it eight in a row for the Whiskey Jacks and Jackson Harbin. Here's the 0-2 to Garcia. Swung on and missed. Foul tip, actually. Into the glove of Rhett Stein. That's strikeout number six for Harbin. He's one away from doubling his season strikeouts. And we go back to the top of the order to Jonathan Brandon. He scored after pinch running for JT Mix. He takes the first pitch high to shortstop. Dean Bittner going back to the outfield grass and camps under it to make the catch. Another three up, three down inning. That makes 10 in a row for Jackson Harbin. It's 9-4 to four Sunfish when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube.
Jorge Galindo returns to the mound. After coming in, walking the first batter he saw, striking out Nolan Drill, and it was on the sack fly that from Rhett Stein that Jake Jelly would score the first run since the first inning for the Whiskey Jacks. But it was Owen Viano who was caught on the base pass trying to take third. The first pitch to Dean Bittner is inside for a ball. So after tonight, the Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks have a doubleheader tomorrow. Fastball hits at the knees. It's 1-1. It'll be the doubleheader tomorrow. I believe first pitch is 5.30 if I'm not mistaken. This time a curveball hits the inside corner. Bittner has to ask where that one hit. He's down one ball, two strikes. Here's the one, two. A fastball low is fouled off. A defensive swing there by Bittner, who walked his last time up for being retired on a 5-4 fielder's choice. Whiskey Jacks will then have a three-game series against the Sabre Dogs. A curveball is grounded to Garcia at short. He comes up with it over to Lee Cohn in time for out number one. After the Sabre Dogs, Wheat City will travel to the Badlands for a two-game series against the Big Sticks before going back to the capital city of Pierce, South Dakota for a two-game series against the Trappers and then a three-game series here from Grand Forks against Pierre. A ground ball on the first pitch by Garrett Olson goes foul. It's no balls, one strike. He struck out swinging to Tom Sun in the sixth inning, his last time up. Otherwise, he reached on a fielder's choice. He pops one up over the back netting into the grandstand. You can kind of hear fans above us running to chase after that one, get their free souvenir. It was two hits in that first inning and two errors that would score three as Galindo with a fist pump in the air gets Olsen to chase on a breaking ball outside. That's strikeout number two on the day for Galindo. And it's out number two here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Whiskey Jacks have struck out five times today, or six times today, as this one's lined sharply into the gap in right center field. It gets by Gannon Thompson, rolls to the wall. Caleb McDowell stops at second base with a two-out double. He sh sharply hit one into the right center field gap, and I think he just did a bit of a stone-cold celebration slamming some beers together and, well, chugging them. A la Stone Cold Steve Austin. Obviously, he's not actually holding beers for those of you listening on the radio. So two out double. The first base hit allowed by Galindo in his relief. Brings up the lefty Trey Guajardo, who sent singling and scoring in the first. He takes a strike at the knees. He has gone 0 for 3 cents, flying out to third, to short, and then grounding out to Jonathan Brandon at second. Wind and deliver, a curveball comes in, and it's called a strike. And Guajardo is down 0 2. Jorge Galindo has been quick with his work on the mound. He gets the sign, and once he gets set, he just immediately kicks and delivers as he goes there. A fastball gets Guajardo to chase. And besides the two-out double by Caleb McDowell, well, it's basically a three-up, three-down inning. Strikeout number three ends it. No runs off one hit, no errors, one left on base. After eight full, it's 9-4 Sunfish. We'll see if the Sunfish can tack on any insurance when we return for the top of the ninth. Here from Grand Forks.
Jackson Harbin will close things out on the mound for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. He has retired 10 straight, going three up, three down in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. He'll face Declan Beers to get things started in the ninth, followed by Jesus Lee Cohn and Will Olson. The first pitch is a fastball that's whiffed down by Beers for strike one. Declan is one for three with a pair of strikeouts. He walked back in the first for being caught stealing. He singled and reached second on an E9 before scoring in that six-run fifth inning. Declan looks at a, a ball down low. It's an even 1-1 one, one count. Breaking ball drops in, and it's one ball, two strikes now to Declan Beers. He's been getting behind early in most of his at-bats today. And here's the kick and deliver from Harbin, who tosses one in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes now to Beers. The Whiskey Jacks, we talked about what they have due up. The Sunfish. As Declan Beers takes a pitch high and away, it's a full count now. After Tuesday, they have Wednesday and Thursday off before going back on the road with a three-game series against the Fremont Moo. Their first full series against Fremont since the opening one at the beginning of the season. And Harbin gets Beers to chase on a fastball. He is now retired 11 straight with the punch out. That's his seventh strikeout of the day. It'll be Jesus Lee Cohn who has been retired his last two times up. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of walks. Was also caught stealing. Fastball swung on early by Lee Cohn. It's no balls, one strike. And after that three-game series in Fremont, the Sunfish welcomed the Moo to Karras Park for the first time in the season with a two-game series on the 12th and 13th. Before back on the road to the two-game series against Hastings. Fastball's called inside. It's two no balls, two strikes. And then... Right before the All-Star break, it's a three-game homestand against the Fremont Moo once more. The Sunfish and the Moo see a lot of each other in this second half of the season. The O2s fouled off by Lee Cohn. In the first part of the season, 20 of the first 32 games of the season for Sioux Falls was against either the Whiskey Jacks or the Pier Trappers, playing the Trappers 12 times in the month of June. The O2 Brushes back Lee Cohn inside. He trots across home plate outside of the left-handed batter's box. He lost his balance. It's one ball, two strikes. But in the last 30 days, 15 of the last 30 games were against the Pier Trappers as Lee Cohn swings on a curveball in the dirt. It's a drop third strike. But Rhett Stein will throw it over to Jake Jelly in time. That's strikeout number eight for Harbin. He is now retired 12 straight. It'll be Will Olson, who flew out his last time up all the way back in the sixth inning. Before that, he had back-to-back -back innings of plate appearances, scoring in both of them. He doubled back in the fifth. A breaking ball bounces in front of home plate and gets away from Rhett Stein. I think it bounced off of the home plate umpire. It's one ball, no strikes. Olsen with his double today extended his hitting streak to six. And if the Sunfish don't get back to Kenneth Dutka, his 11 game hitting streak will end today as Olsen fouls one off of the backstop evening the count at one. After Olsen, Dutka is the third 
batter up so the Sunfish would have to get McClure and Thompson on somehow as there are two outs here in the top of the ninth. A breaking ball is seen in the dirt by Olsen. It's two balls, one strike. Dutka today is flown out twice, had a sack fly with an RBI and also scored after walking. But could not get that hit, so his hitting streak might end at 11 today. Fastball is swung on and fouled. And I think Will Olsen... Nope, he didn't break a bad. I think that one was just inside. He might have fouled it off of himself. He's walking it off. Again, the umpire will brush off a clean plate just to give Olsen his time. It's two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the ninth. Here's the 2-2. Fly ball, center field. Guajardo coming in will make the catch. And Jackson Harbin will end his day retiring 13 straight. He saw 15 batters, and he retired the last 13 of them through four and two-thirds innings, allowing just one hit. The Sunfish still lead by five. Can the Whiskey Jacks come back? against Sioux Falls. We will see when we return in the bottom of the ninth inning on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream. Jake Jelly will lead things off again. This will be his fourth time where he has let off an inning. That's absolutely fantastic. I don't know why I get a kick out of that, but I do. The Sunfish trail by five. Jelly was the reason that the Sun or that the Whiskey Jacks, excuse me, trail by five, and he was the reason. Well that they got that fourth run. He's scoring on a sack fly by Rhett Stein as he swings and misses on a fastball. It's 0-1 to get things kicked off here in the ninth inning. And Jackson Harbin, though, for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks have at least given the Jacks a chance as Galindo with a curveball inside makes it a no-ball two-strike count. Through four and two-thirds innings, which just so happens to be his longest outing of the season for Harbin. The 0-2 from Galindo is lined up the middle for a base hit from Jake Jelly. He flips the bat on his way to first. And he's has yet to be retired when he's the leadoff. Back in the first inning, he struck out swinging. But when he's let it off in the third, fifth, seventh, and now ninth innings, he's gotten on every time. Two walks and two hits. It's now Owen Viano who singled and was the reason the seventh inning ended as quickly as it did when Jelly scored from third on the long fly out to right field. Viano was caught on the base pass. He swings through a curveball for strike one. But so Harbin, through four and two-thirds innings, allowed just one hit, and that was Benito Garcia back in his first inning of work. The 0-1 is a fastball away. It's 1-1. Otherwise, he did not allow 
a single run. Well, there was he inherited the bases loaded. All three of those would score on wild pitches. But all of them were credited to Reedman as a pitch misses high. It's 2-1. He struck out eight today. And after allowing the hit to Benito Garcia, went 13 up, 13 down. Fastball swung on and missed a bit late there by Viano, who evens up the count at two. So the Sunfish are held to just seven hits today, but they do lead nine to four. Fastball just misses low. A good eye by Viano. Is that one? Ah, that looked like it might have been just at the knees, maybe a bit low. That's a borderline strike. And here's the full count, the payoff. This one's lined off the end of the bat into left field. It's going to fall in front of Declan Beers. Back-to-back -back base hits just like the seventh. And it's still a long way to go for Wheat City. They have two on. They trail by five. That's hit number 11 for the Whiskey Jacks. There is someone up in the pen for Sioux Falls. But I think Walker Bullington will allow Galindo to go as long as he possibly can with this one. Here's the first pitch. A curveball for a strike to Jackson Sorensen. And as Jorge Galindo just allowed the one run in Tom Sun's first outing that last inning, he would go five innings, five hits, one earned run. This time a pitch hits the inside corner and Sorensen's down 0-2. Sorensen started off the game hot, going two for two with a single and a double before cooling off, striking out, and walking. The 0-2 popped up, left side. McClure chasing back down the left field line. That's gonna be dropping and it drops in between Garcia and McClure. No balls, two strikes to Sorensen. And I think Benito Garcia kind of let off on that one as McClure was chasing back down the left field line. Declan Beers in left field had no shot on it. He wasn't playing close to the line at all. Benito Garcia kind of had a nice path on it. I think he held off a bit, it but it didn't look like himself or McClure really had a clean play. Even if they do catch it, then third base is wide open for Jelly to advance. Galindo climbs the ladder, gets Sorensen to chase one high for his third strikeout of the day. Sorensen goes down on the punch out twice today. It's Nolan Drill, who has walked twice. Reached on the E4 in the first and struck out in the seventh. Up with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Glendo delivers a changeup for a strike. Here's the 0-1 from Galindo, a fastball, called a strike, and Drill is now down 0-2. The 0-2 is lined down the left field line, just foul. Just foul, he was a bit ahead of that one, pulled it just a bit too much did drill he's ahead of the change up the off speed fooling him good pitch choice there by Galindo still no balls and two strikes runners on second and first one away whiskey jacks down nine to four to the sunfish Here's the 0-2 inside, it's 1-2. Galindo leaning back 
asking where that one missed, if he was asking if it was high or inside. But given that one high, I guess. Lindo sets and delivers a breaking ball up and in again. It's 2-2 two -two now. Will Olson turns around asking the umpire, is that one missing high again? Quick nod. Do up after drill is a 7-8-9 of Rhett Stein, Dean Bittner, and Garrett Olson. The 2-2. Two -two. Misses high and in, almost hits the helmet of drill this time. And Galindo, after being up 0-2, is now in danger of walking drill. Stein has not gotten on base yet this season. The guy in the on-deck circle, and Galindo loses him. After being up 0-2, after being up 0-2, Nolan Drill draws the walk. Galindo just couldn't get anything going, and we're going to have a pinch runner. As there's going to be a mound visit, and I think the infield is just giving time to whoever's up over in the Sunfish bullpen to get warm. The pinch runner we're going to see. So I think I know who it is, just got a quick double check. It's number six, it's Cameron Daigle. Out of LSU Alexandria. 5'9", 155. He's going to be pinch running with the bases loaded. And that brings up Rhett Stein, who again had the sack fly that scored Jelly last time up. He pops this one up into the shallow infield. He tosses his bat to the ground. Infield fly was in effect. Benito Garcia makes the catch as Rhett Stein saw the first pitch and popped it up just behind second base. Again, he slammed his bat into the ground on that one. As he knows, well, now his team is down to just one more out, and it's Dean Bittner. Grounded out his first time up and his last time up with a single and a walk in there. First pitch to him is a fastball up. Will Olsen pops up, looks over at first to Daigle, Lee Cohn wasn't covering, so it was just a scare tactic. A long ball here, still makes it just a one run lead for the Sunfish. Breaking ball up and in, misses, it's two and oh. Game tying run is in the on deck circle in Garrett Olson. Jorge Galindo still has to go through Dean Bittner. The 2-0. Fastball right down the middle. Two balls, one strike. Driven high and deep to left field. Declan Beers is back. That's at the wall. It's off the bottom of the wall. Beers will throw it in. The third run, rounding third to throw in. Daigle is going to be safe. A three-run double for Dean Bittner. Clears the bases and makes it just a two-run ball game. Jake Jelly, Owen Viano, and Nolan Drill all score on the double by Dean Bittner. Walker Bullington looks to continue with Jorge Galindo. They're going to try and close it out with him. It's Garrett Olson who has struck out his last two times up. He's marking the game-tying run. The Whiskey Jacks have scored four unanswered since the Sunfish scored nine unanswered of their own. Galindo's first pitch is a fastball right at the knees for strike one. Again, this is a pitcher-friendly ballpark as Dean Bittner got all of that one, and that's another hit that it misses just at the bottom of the wall. 
A breaking ball bounces on the plate. It's 1-1. There's been a few of those long doubles today. That marks one, two, three, four doubles on the day for the Whiskey Jacks. The 1-1 fouled off. It's a 1-2 count on the fastball right down the middle. Dean Bittner out at second has given the Whiskey Jacks a chance. Garrett Olson down to his last strike. Galindo looks in, goes upright, kicks and delivers. Got him with the foul tip on the breaking ball. Galindo, after allowing three to reach and a Dean Bittner bases clearing three RBI double, takes it himself to close it out. That's strikeout number four on the day for Galindo. And the Sunfish take this one in Wheat City, 9-7. Three runs crossed there off of the double by Bittner. That marks three hits in the inning. No errors, one left on base. The Sioux Falls Sunfish take this one against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. They are now 5-4, and four, still in favor of the Whiskey Jacks on the season series. Your final stat line, the Sunfish, nine runs off six hits, two errors tonight, while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks have seven runs off 12 hits, two errors. Your winning pitcher in his first appearance, Tom Sun. Tom out of Augustana making his Sunfish debut, goes five innings, allowing five hits, just one earned run, five walks, and three strikeouts. Jorge Galindo closing out this one. Going three innings, four hits, three earned runs, two walks, and five strikeouts. The losing pitcher will be Ryan Reedman. Reedman only went a third of an inning of relief but allowed six runs. That would put the Sunfish ahead by nine and give them the lead that they would not relinquish. They almost did. A final... Pitch was at 10.08, just three hours and five minutes on this one from Grand Forks. The Sunfish improved to 4-1 and one in the second half, while the Whiskey Jacks are handed their second loss. They fall to 2-2. Two and two. Overall, the Sunfish go back to 500 on the season at 18 apiece, while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks are now 16-18 and 18 overall. We return tomorrow on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube, 535 first pitch in game one of the doubleheader. Two seven inning ball games tomorrow from Kraft Field. I'm David Coyer and I'll be on the call once more for both games tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Go fish and well, go Whiskey Jacks. Nice shot, everyone. Can I have Sammy? Yes, and it's great. Oh. It's right by the coat.